If you like setting off fireworks, but you don't want to be too close when they go off, I'll show you how to take an ESP8266 and a relay, create a Wi-Fi network, and set off fireworks from a distance on this special episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The 4th of July is one of my favorite holidays, and fireworks are absolutely the best part of it. Now, one of the unfortunate drawbacks of fireworks is that they are somewhat dangerous, and if you're not careful, you can blow your hand off if one goes off too suddenly. Now, a way of getting around this is to do it remotely, and there are all sorts of ways of doing this, but one of my favorite is to do it over Wi-Fi using some Arduino hacks that we've learned previously in Cyber Weapons Lab. Now, on this episode, we're going to dive into controlling relays the way we did before with the light, but this time we're going to be controlling something a lot more exciting, which is a firework. Now, to make this work, we're going to need some additional things aside from an ESP8266 and a relay. And I, rem I recommend that you get the, uh, it's about a $3 ESP D1 Mini, as well as the shield that goes on top of it, because you can just plug them into each other, and as you can see, it's a very compact little board. Now, if you don't have this, you can use any ESP model like the Node MCU and just plug it into a breakout board, and it's all very easy to control and honestly a lot of fun. Now, for this project, you'll also need a 9 volt battery, and if you get the wrong gauge of Nichrome wire, which is what we'll be using as the heating element, this won't work very well. So I recommend that you get 32 gauge Nichrome wire, which is a really fast heating element, which after we pass some current from the 9 volt battery through it will get so hot that it will light whatever firework we want. Now, in addition, we're going to be forming a lot of stuff with aluminum tape, and this is highly conductive and will allow us to build circuits, which will launch the firework and prevent us from having to be any near, anywhere near it when it goes off. Now, on top of this, we'll need some alligator clips, which are a way that we can quickly build prototypes and test electrical connectivity, and a multimeter, which will allow us to check to see whether our circuit is complete and if electricity is flowing between the contacts we create. Now we're going to be taking fireworks and we will take little bits of nichrome wire, pass it between the part that needs to get hot in order for the firework to go off, and make it so that the Wi-Fi network created by the ESP is what we connect to to switch on and off the circuit. Now this will allow us to run a program on our computer which will fire it for us, which is kind of the crescendo of all of this, just running a program on your computer, kicking back and letting your computer do the work of firing the firework for you. Now, once you have all these things and you're ready to follow along, you'll just need a Linux computer and a firework that is safe and legal to use in your area. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, because it'll help you if you get stuck or run into any other sorts of problems. Once you have all this ready to set up, then we can begin. All right, so first things, Let's go ahead and connect the ESP and the relay and then plug it into our computer. And we're going to jump into Arduino IDE so that we can upload the sketch that will allow us to control everything. So in Arduino, we can uh, see that this, oh, I actually don't have it open yet. So while that opens, let's go to the GitHub page where we'll actually find the information we'll need to do this. I'm going to go to github.com slash skakar slash Arduino fireworks. And if you scroll down, you can see the instructions for the project, what you'll need, and then at the very top, cloner download, which is what we'll need to do in order to download the files for the sketch. So there's gonna be two parts here. Let me clear this. We can type git clone, and then our repository here. We'll type cd Arduino fireworks ls, and you can see there's a firing.sh, which is the script that we'll use to fire off the fireworks, and then there's also arduinofireworks.ino. So open up arduinofireworks.ino, and inside the Arduino file, we should see this relay firework sketch that basically allows us to fire off the firework from a fixed access point. Oops, and that's the wrong one. Let's go ahead and pick the right one. So, Arduino Fireworks, here we go. All 
All right, once this relay fireworks sketch opens, Oh, now there's two. Great. All right. Once this relay sketch firework opens, then we'll see that we have the ability to set the Wi-Fi network that it creates in order for us to control the fireworks. We can set a password and that's pretty much all we need to modify. You can go ahead and just keep it at Fuddruckers if you want, because I think that's a great name to control explosions with. Go ahead and click on tools and then go to board and you're going to want to select the uh, well, whatever board you're using. I'm using the Lolan Wemos D1 and uh, R2 D1 Mini. Um, it's a really good board for this. There's lots of shields available, but you might be using the Node MCU. If you don't see this, click on Arduino, Preferences, and in there you should see Additional Board Manager URL. Make sure that you have this JSON link here. I'll go ahead and click on it, uh, because that will allow you to have this board listed in your list of available boards. So once you go ahead and paste this JSON link in here, you can click OK and then under tools, you should be able to, under your board manager, uh, select the ESP8266 by searching for it in this window and then loading the library that includes it. OK, so next up, once we have all this great stuff done, we can click on tools and we'll need to select the port that we're going to connect to. And hopefully we're able to find it on the first try. Yep, there we go. We'll go to uh, USB serial. And we're also going to have the ability to listen in on serial with this. So afterwards we can press uh, command shift M to open a serial window. So I'm going to press upload and we should see the ESP then parse and accept the sketch. And sometimes these don't always work the first time. So let's go ahead and push it a second time. And if you get a problem like this also, it can just be the cable. So if you get just this frustrating thing where your ESP is not working and you don't know why, and no matter what you do, it doesn't upload, go ahead and take a different cable, usually a cable that's shorter, and try connecting it there. This is by far the most frustrating thing I've had to do while debugging this because I think my code doesn't work, and it turns out it's just a bad cable. Especially I find it the cheaper the ESP, the more likely that it's just the cable. So now that I've connected again, let's try the sketch. And there we go. It is uploading. OK, now that we have the control element up and running, it's time for us to actually wire stuff so that when we send a command to this, it will actually do something. Let's get rid of everything we don't need. And we're going to focus on connecting this to the various parts it needs to be connected to. We have the common terminal, which in the center of the relay will be where power comes in. And we're going to connect this last via a alligator clip, which I'll get out now, to the power terminal or the positive terminal of the battery. Here we go. So this here will go into our relay and we'll be switching and controlling this power over Wi-Fi with this little relay right here. So next, we'll need to take a little bit of this nichrome wire. And again, the thinner it is, the better, because if it's really, really long, then there will be more resistance and it'll take a much larger battery in order for it to work. So the thinner, the better, the shorter, the better. Uh, both of those things will help improve your reliability with the smaller battery. So you don't need to walk around with something truly big. So now that I've cut this, I'm just going to take a little bit of wire for our experiment and I'm going to take the normally open circuit, which means this is normally not connected. And with another wire, I'm going to connect this to our piece of nichrome wire. So here's the nichrome wire. I'm going to connect the other end of the alligator clip to the wire that's coming out of our normally open circuit. Now the last step here is we're going to be connecting via one final alligator clip the other side of the nichrome wire here and attaching that to the battery. Now we've completed the circuit and the only thing holding the electricity back from pulsing through this wire is the relay right here. So we need to first clear this stuff off so we have a good space to test this out. Then we'll go ahead and put this up in front of where the camera is 
And last, I'll connect to this power and hopefully, there we go. All right, so this looks like a big mess, but if everything succeeds, we should be able to pulse power across and I'll test this really quickly. Yep, so there is a good connection between those two points. So what I'm gonna do is then jump back on my computer. I'm going to connect to the Fuddruckers control network. And in my sketch here, if I type, well, you can see ls here, there is a firing.sh script. So once we've connected to our Fuddruckers network, I'm going to type bash firing.sh and the computer will take control of pulsing the battery power through our nichrome wire for about five seconds before automatically shutting off the circuit. Let's give it a try. And there we are, the wire heats up and once we loop it around some fuse, we should be able to remotely trigger a firework from a distance over Wi-Fi. Now the final step is going to be we'll disconnect this battery and remove it before bringing in any fireworks to avoid any accidental ignition. I'm gonna disconnect this and move everything except our electrical tape over to the side. And we're gonna bring in any old firework, it doesn't really matter which type, and some nichrome wire. Now what we'll need to do here is take a length of nichrome wire, and this really, really needs to be not too long. If it's too long, then you will need a really big power source in order to actually get it to light up the way that we just saw. So using 32 gauge nichrome wire, you can go ahead and take about this length. And what you'll need to do is form it first into a V shape like this. Then once you squish it so it's as narrow as possible without touching like so, you'll fold it over once and one more time to make this sort of shape. Now this shape will be fitted down into the firework and we're gonna go ahead and loop it around the fuse, whoops. And this is a little bit tricky and small, but once you get it around the fuse like so, you can put it down in there and it will generate enough heat to set off the fuse. We'll need to fold it on either side down like this and this is gonna be where we stick our aluminum tape in order to complete the connection. So now we have nichrome wire on either side of the firework, but we'll need to use the aluminum tape in order to get it to stick. So we'll take a couple strips of aluminum tape, and what our goal is, is to wire up two different halves of this firework so that when we apply electricity to either half, we get a reliable ignition. So I'm gonna take two strips here, And you can get aluminum tape in all kinds of places. I get mine from Daiso. And you might have to cut through me just struggling with this tape because it is a little bit tricky to get off. But once we get a reliable sticky portion, there we go. We will first put a piece down underneath. And this is the part that will actually be making contact. And we'll clip alligator clips or something else onto this in order to make contact later on. Then we'll take another little square of this. And this is what is actually going to be sticking the aluminum tape or the uh, nichrome wire down on the aluminum tape. So it's important to know that on the aluminum tape, the sticky side is not conductive. So to get this to work, we need to turn this over, have the nichrome wire directly against the conductive part, which is the, the top of the foil, and then stick this down on top of it, I'll do it this way actually, in a way that doesn't cross over the side of the firework. So we need to keep this all kind of on one half. And then once I tamp this down, we have a little tab for us to clip an alligator clip onto, and at the top, we have the nichrome wire stuck directly to the aluminum. Now we're gonna do the same on the other side, and after taking a piece of aluminum tape, we'll stick this down here so we get good contact with the wire, making sure that we keep a gap between the two halves. 
So I'll put this right here and I'll make sure this is down. So make sure that there's a gap like that. And the last step is one more tab to stick this down. All right, so we have the nichrome wire directly against the conductive aluminum. We'll stick this down and make sure we have good contact on it. And that should be everything we need to cyberize this firework so that when we set it off, the power will pulse from one side of the tape to the other via this wire and set off the fuse down here. The next step will be to head outside and test this out because while it is extremely unlikely, testing this inside will pass a small amount of current through both sides of this and into the nichrome. And while it's not likely that it will go off, it's better safe than sorry. So we'll go outside to do the last portion on a different firework that we have cyberized in the same way. After we set up everything inside, the last step will be to move our modified firework outside because testing the conductivity, while unlikely, has a non-zero chance of possibly setting the firework off. Now the way we'll test it is to take a multimeter, connect the power side to the power side of the firework, and then the ground side of the multimeter to the ground side, and we should hear a tone when set to the right setting as soon as there is a positive flow of electricity through our nichrome wire. Now we'll go ahead and disconnect this. We're gonna put our multimeter to the side and we'll go ahead and make the final connections in order to make this be able to be triggered over Wi-Fi. So we'll take the uh, normally open circuit, which we will close over Wi-Fi and connect it to the power side of the firework. We'll take the other end that goes through the relay, which is connected to the common terminal, and we will connect that to the power side of the firework. And of course it's not actually connected, but it will be when we send it the command over Wi-Fi. We're gonna take the ground side of the firework and we're going to connect it to the ground side of the battery. And then finally, we're going to power our ESP8266 with an external battery so that it'll create the Wi-Fi network that we are going to use to connect to and then send the commands to fire off this particular firework. So let's head inside and set it off. Now the final step once we've rigged up the firework and moved indoors is to set it off from a safe distance. The first step is to make sure that we are connected to the control network which is called Fuddruckers. And as soon as we are, we can go ahead and use the bash firing.sh command in order to automatically fire the firework without any intervention. We'll go ahead and type bash firing.sh and when we press return, the computer should take control of the program and fire off the round. The computer has control, counting down from five. Firing. Safe. And there we go. Just like that, we were able to turn on and then off the relay, thus setting off the firework. While setting off fireworks over Wi-Fi from a distance is much safer for being close to it while you're setting them off, there are some things here we need to be careful about. You should never put your face over a firework over a launcher while you're working with it, especially while you're putting in nichrome wire, which could get hot very suddenly. So just as a general rule, just never ever put your face over a firework when you're putting it inside a launcher or any other time for that matter. Now another good rule is never test a firework's conductivity when you've modified this way indoors, because if you use a multimeter, it is putting some voltage between those two points, so the current could actually cause the firework to go off. It's very, very unlikely, but because it's a non-zero chance, I highly recommend that you do the testing outdoors and not inside your apartment or another place where a firework going off would be a big deal. With that being said, this is a project that adults should supervise and children shouldn't be allowed to do, but it is a really cool way of taking a fun 4th of July tradition and doing it in an interesting way that a lot of different people can have a little bit of fun with with Arduino and some low cost components.
That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.